And so let's let's talk about male fighter of the year. Last year, I like to do this. I like to tell you my pick last year, and then I like to tell you my pick this year. Last year, my pick, Michael Bisping. Remember, he won a UFC 199. He defended the title at 204. It was the shocker of all shockers. He also won my upset of the year. What a moment it was. But it was a tough one to predict. It was a tough one to pick, I should say, because Cody Garbrandt went from unranked champ. Steve Miocic became champion. Great run for him as well. Conor McGregor, 2-1, and one, avenged his loss to Nate Diaz, but also beat Eddie Alvarez to become the first champ champ in MMA history. And there was also Amanda Nunes, who beat Shevchenko and Misha Tate and, of course, Ronda Rousey to end the year. Actually, she was in my Women's Fighter of the Year. Um, but she could, she could have been both. She could have been both. Why not? The point is, last year, I thought... There were like surefire picks and you could have made a strong case. This year, there was some there was some picks. I, th I think it came down to three or four people, but I feel like you can make a strong case for each and every one of them. In fact, I put out a poll earlier, uh, earlier today. I put out a poll and uh, I asked people who their fighter of the year was. I don't know. Can I see this here? Let me see if I could see it here. Yeah, here it is. Already... 19,000 people have voted on this. I asked them, who's your male fighter of the year? Um, I asked if it's Demetrius Johnson, Max Holloway, or Robert Whitaker. And then I also gave the option of other. 25% to Demetrius Johnson, 52% to Max Holloway, 16% to Robert Whitaker, and then 7% to other. Demetrius Johnson, if you recall, win over Wilson Hayes back in April. And then he followed that up with the win over Ray Borg in October and pulled off one of the greatest submissions in the history of the sport. In doing so, he also became the most successful champion in UFC history because he beat Anderson Silva's title defense record. And now he sits atop that list all by himself. Very notable. Max Holloway was in action in June. He beat Jose Aldo to become the official featherweight champion. And then he was going to fight Frank Edgar, if you recall, in December. But unfortunately, Frank Edgar gets hurt, breaks his orbital bone, and he has to fight Jose Aldo again. And he beats him again, which is very notable and very impressive. Robert Whitaker, let's not forget, even though he was interim champion, even though he never actually won the belt, so to speak, I mean, you can make the case that he had the toughest road of all. Don't let revisionist history affect you here. Going into that fight against Jacare in April, most people, if not all, were picking Jacare. That was somewhat of a shocker. That's a finalist for upset of the year, in my opinion. I don't remember what the odds are, but I know most of you did not think that he was going to win that fight. And then he goes into the Romero fight, and I think most people were thinking that, like, no one wanted to fight Romero. Remember, like, Romero was the boogeyman. No one wanted to fight him. Went in there and beat him after, I believe, losing the first two rounds. Won a five-round decision. Then, of course, the whole thing got a little screwy with the uh, middleweight title and the MSG show. He didn't fight again this year. And that was another tough thing. Like I thought the top contenders all fought two times when last year we had a bunch who fought three times, four times. Cody Garbrandt. So it, like, it made it a little more difficult. I think if if one of them had three wins, there there were some who did not win belts. You know, uh, RDA I think was in the mix. Volkan Ozdemir was in the mix. There were some who did not win belts. But typically, when it comes to fight of the year, typically historically, this is this isn't like a you know a hard fast rule. But historically, it's someone who's holding a title, won a belt, etc. And so. I think it came down to those three. I think it came down to Max Holloway with the two victories over Jose Aldo. Does it hurt him that he fought the same guy twice? You be the judge. I think it came down to Demetrius Johnson, who had two finishes over top contenders, one of the greatest submissions of all time. And oh, by the way, he breaks a record. And let's not forget, with like with what we saw in November, what we saw at 217, Holding a belt, like look at Joanna, look at Ronda, like holding a belt for five, six title defenses is hard enough. Holding it for one or two title defenses, like just ask Luke Rockhold, hard enough. Doing it 11 times, 
I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Forget about the comp. He's just fighting who's put in front of him. And, and, and by the way, he's fighting a couple of guys twice. To do that 11 times, that's going to be one of the toughest records to ever break in this sport. And there's no sign of him slowing down. And so, yeah, I do feel like that should be considered. Like we saw some great champions who we thought would be dominant for a very long time. We saw some great champions falter a lot sooner than we thought. It is very, when you're on top of the mountain, when everyone's expecting you to win, when, when there's so much, when there's such a large gap between being champion and, and not being champion, when that fall is so steep, there's a lot of pressure on the champion to stay at the top, to keep getting that championship purse, to keep getting those endorsements, to keep getting those pay-per-view points. I mean, there is a massive discrepancy between being champion and not being champion. And that's why we've seen some guys who have said, yeah, sure, I'll take the interim belt. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter because what the interim belt does, it kicks in certain things into your contract. So it doesn't matter to them that it's a fictitious title or a promotional title or whatever you want to call it. Just get me the belt and certain things will kick in. And they certainly don't want to lose that belt because when they lose that belt, there is a, like, I don't think fans really get that. There is a big, big, big discrepancy between being champion and not being a champion. A massive discrepancy in your pay, in your lifestyle, in what you get to fight. And so I think that's important to note when you're, when you're trying to break down, you know, who, who's been the best, who's been the most dominant, who's had the best year. Some other names worth discussing before I actually announce who my fighter of the year is. So we talked about Demetrius. We talked about Max Holloway. I do think RDA deserves a nod for reinventing himself at 170 for the win over uh, Neil Magny, for the win over Robbie Lawler. He had a great year. 3-0 is a 170 pounder. And if you remember what happened last year um, to him losing the belt, he had a nightmare of a year last year. 2016 was a nightmare for RDA. And I think a lot of people thought that he would crumble as a result of this. But he moves up to 170. He 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 changes things up dramatically, I think, and you know even changed a bit of his 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 coaching staff, the people around him, his corner. And look what he I mean, he is on the cusp of a title shot. I think most people would agree he should probably be next for a title shot. He could also be in the discussion for comeback fighter of the year. He could also be in the discussion for most improved fighter of the year. I think he has improved a lot as a 170 pounder. And then another name to consider is Volkan Ozdemir. 3-0 and on the cusp of a title shot, on the verge of a title shot. Knocked out the likes of Misha Serkinov, knocked out the likes of Jimmy Manoa, beat OSP, who had a great back end of the year. He could also be in the discussion for most improved breakthrough fighter. GSP as well. Even though he fought once, is he in that discussion? Could he be breakthrough? Could he be comeback of the year? In the end, though, it was a very tough choice. But in the end, I picked a winner who I'm very confident is the right winner. I, 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 I really, this was to me the toughest category of them all because there were a lot of worthy winners. But in the end, I went with the man who defended his title twice, who finished both opponents, who pulled off one of the greatest submissions in the history of the sport, if not the greatest submission in the history of the sport. And I went with the man who made history in October in Las Vegas, the man who became the winningest champion in the history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. If Demetrius Johnson did not win the Fighter of the Year Award in 2017, he'll never win the Fighter of the Year Award. This was the year of Mighty Mouse. He deserves it. He earned it. And he is my 2017 Male Fighter of the Year. DJ, are you there? DJ, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? There he is. Fighter of the year, Demetrius Johnson. How about a round of applause? It was such a big deal. It was such a prestigious moment. There he is on Skype. I can't believe it. Wow. We finally got him. Yes. How are you, sir? What's happening? Wow. Can you hear me still? Or no? I yes can or hear no? you. I can see you. This is fantastic. Look at this. Look at this connection. Perfect. Finally. Perfect. Perfect. Well, congratulations. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm happy to have it. I think you you are the best when it comes to uh, covering the sport of mixed martial arts. So thank you. It's an honor. You know, uh, for the world to know, uh, I told DJ, uh, you won the award. You're my fighter of the year. And he said, okay, now I'll finally come on Skype. This whole time he could have come on Skype. He's no, 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 no. It wasn't that bad. Oh, uh, but this is the perfect time to uh, debut your great, your great stream. I mean, look at this connection. It's fantastic. So uh, congratulations, fighter of the year, uh, two wins, uh, two submissions, two great finishes. I mean, just fantastic stuff. You, 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 you break the record in October, one of the greatest subs. When I ask you about 2017, as far as your career is concerned, where does this one rank? Do you think this was your best year yet? Is it your second? How, how, would, you, how would you sort of summarize and recall the year that was for you? Yeah, I would say it's probably my best year yet. Obviously, submitting Wilson Hayes, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt with an arm bar, and then getting Ray Borg and uh, the Mighty Wizard. Uh, it, it, it was awesome. Always doing something new in the octagon that nobody has ever seen. I mean, there's been people around the world trying that move. There's people who've been watching mixed martial arts before I was even around this, this sport saying, I've seen everything, and I have never seen that before. Thank you so much for displaying uh, mixed martial arts at its greatest. Um, so I put up a poll earlier today and I asked people who their fighter of the year was you, Robert Whitaker, Max Holloway. Those are the choices. I, Cause I think it really came down to you three as far as 20,000 votes thus far, a lot of people, the majority of the people, I think 50% gave it to Max Holloway. What do you, what do you think about this choice? Do you think they're crazy? I think it's a great choice. Okay. I think great, it's a great choice. Max Holloway, a uh, big fan of his, very humbled. I like the guy. Uh, and that's why, you know, I, I got to keep setting the bar even higher. You know, I, I don't see anybody stopping Max Holloway anytime soon. Um, and I, I think it's a great choice. Max Holloway's beat Joe Diallo twice, back-to-back, finished him back-to-back. And he, he never uh, shies away for, from a challenge. So, um, I'm, you know, I'll cast my vote for Max Holloway. No. Well, I actually voted for Max Holloway. I saw that Twitter poll, and I voted for him. <laughs> really? Is that true? Of course, yeah, I saw it. I mean, fine. I voted this morning. He was at 25, and I was behind him. So it was him, me, and then I think it was Whitaker, and then you had other right. Yeah, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Are you saying that I'm wrong? Are you saying my pick is wrong? No, 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 no. Everybody has their opinion, Eric Hawani. And in my opinion, you know, I'm not going to vote for myself. I mean, that just seems very biased. But I like Maxwell. I like what he does. Um, I've hung out with him before in Hawaii. Very chill. You know, he doesn't believe he's better than anybody. He's, he's, a, he's a great human being. So I'm like the guy who likes the good guys. I don't care if you're a bad guy talking crap about people, but I gained a lot more respect from him after Frankie Edgar pulled out. In this day and age of mixed martial arts, you hear people calling each other out saying, oh, he's a pussy, he's a bitch, blah, blah, blah. He picked the injury. But Max Holloway went above everybody and says, you know what, Frankie Edgar, it's part of the sport. Get healthy, get healthy, my man, and we'll see you next time. Other than that, if there's anybody else out there who's ready to fight, holler at your boy. Very respectful, very professional, and I love that about him. And that's why I cast my vote. All right. Fair enough. Um, do you think that not enough stock is put into the fact that you've defended the title so many times? Like, do people take this for granted? I think we've seen this year. So many champions falter. It is so tough to remain at the top, right? There's so much pressure. There's so much goes, so much that goes into it. There's such a fall, a massive fall from grace. Do, do people really understand in your opinion? Not, I'm not trying to get you to toot your own horn, but it is tough to, to defend that title so many times. No. 100%. 100%. I mean, you see champions all the time. They get the belt, then they then they go on a two-fight, one streak, and then they lose it. But to be able to defend the belt from 2012 all the way to 2017, hopefully defending it two more times in 2018, um, it's extremely freaking hard. That's why there's only, you know, a couple people who've done it. GSP, John Jones, uh, Jose Aldo, me, and Anderson Silva. So there's five guys right there in the span of the time I've been a champion. And I always, you know, I always chuckle because... I remember there was a time when Chris Wagner was champion, Joseph was champion, uh, Frankie was champion, Anna Brow was champion. Shit, hell, even TJ became champion. Um, Donald Cruz was champion, uh, but they're not champions anymore, and I'm still here sitting on my throne. So you see those pitches over the years of time, but even Ronda, Misha Tate, um, you, you just kind of like 
damn, like, it's good shit, I guess. <laughs> yes, very good shit. And by the way, while I have you here, we're going to go in order throughout the show, but while I have you here, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to just, you know, uh, hog up one word. The male fight of the year is a very prestigious thing, but... Uh, Demetrius Johnson, congratulations. You also won my Submission of the Year Award. Now, this was the easiest award to decide on. You won the Submission of the Year Award for your submission of Ray Borg back at UFC 216 in October, one of the greatest submissions I've ever seen. This one, there is no, if I put out a poll, this should be 100% you and zero for everyone else, right? I mean, like, you can't, you can't be humble. This, this one has to be yours, right? Yeah, it has to be. I mean, like I said, there's been people around the world trying this, and that's the beautiful thing about mixed martial arts, and I would tell people that. You have to think outside of the box. And when I, when I pulled out that submission, how I learned it was from Matt Hume. Me and Hume were sparring, and he's having a hard time getting me in the arm bar, running a choke. And so he mixed in a wrestling snapdown. So basically, uh, a suplex to a wrestling snapdown. If anybody's wrestled, wrestled before, when somebody has to sit out, you snap him down and pin him. But he basically did that, mixed it in, and threw me between his legs and did an arm bar. And I said, after he submitted me, I got up, I'm going to go, God bless your soul teach me this and then he and then he and then he taught it and he taught it to me then he taught that class and i've been in that submission for years and years and then each time i'm training and sparring i'm always pushing myself to, to send in my my training partners and that was the week before um we went out to fight ray board this turned out to be 12 week camp uh i was sparring and matt was young he goes hit it hit it and so i hit it and matt goes dude like you got to hit that. You mastered it. You've been doing it for years. And he goes, that's fifty thousand dollars submission right there, DJ. That's that's what that is. And so when he came in this fight, I was like, you know what? I got energy left. Ray Borg is my size. He, he weighs the same as me. I got this, and I pop threw him up, and you know, landed it. So I'm grateful that you picked it as submission of the year. Earl Hawan, I truly appreciate that. Yes. And uh, and I hope everybody around the world enjoys that submission. And uh, I got some more stuff out of that bag that you guys haven't seen yet. But oh. I hope that one day I'm able to pull it out for you guys. My question is, uh, since you pulled that off uh, a little less than three months ago, how many pro fighters have come up to you and asked you about that? How often do you get asked about that submission? Because I, I would imagine on that Monday morning after you pulled it off that every guy was at the gym, every girl trying to pull that off. Yeah. Uh, Francis, Francis Nagano came up to me and goes, Mikey, uh, <laughs> how did you do that? What is that? Huh? What, what did that move? And I told him, and uh, I, I tried, I, I told him I'll do it on him, but I don't want to blow out my lower back because he's so big and tall. Um, but yeah, all people around the world have, have praised me on it and said that's pretty dope. And they tried it in the, um, the gym. And th what I wanted to achieve when I did that move is to open everybody's mind that it's mixed martial arts. So even though the submission was a jujitsu move, you can get there by other ways. In wrestling, when I was in high school, my coach says, you should be able to hit every single move from any position. So arm drag to double leg, you know, snap down to double leg. Um, you should be able to hit a move anymore. So with my arm bar, I can essentially hit it from any position because it's my favorite submission. Um, I want to bring in New York Rick. Is New York Rick there? New York Rick going once, going twice. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, let's just hear his voice. I mean, let's not. I'm here. I'm here. Let's just, let's go back to the champ here. I just want to hear his voice. I don't need to see the guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mighty Mouse back on. Where's screen. Mighty Mouse? Did we lose him? No. I'm right here. Okay. Um, Demetrius, uh, New York Rick is here. Uh, he he gives out awards too, and uh, he d he put in a, a, his vote for Fighter of the Year. Uh, New York Rick, why don't you tell Mighty Mouse who your Fighter of the Year is for 2017? I think Demetrius will appreciate this. My Fighter of the Year for 2017 is Max Holloway. Get out of here! Are you serious? You're gonna <laughs> tell the ch the champ of champs? Really? No respect. Come on. Deep down, you think he's an idiot, right, DJ? No. No, no, no. Oh, I mean, God. like I said, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. And like I said, I cast my vote for Max Holloway. Um, I like the guy. I think he's good. I think he has all the right tools to be a champion for a long time. As long as he can stay healthy, um, I, I don't see anybody beating him, man. I think, you know, I think his toughest test will probably come from, you know, Brian Ortega, a very young guy. Um, also, Chad Mendez, when he gets back in there. Um and other than that, you know, I I, I I don't see anybody else coming up right now. I mean, I remember Ray Francisco B was going to 145, but they're all high. He was trolling every single one of you guys to believe that. Um, but we'll see. But I think Max is going to be there for a long time. Fantastic uh, uh, year, Max. Fantastic. You're correct. Did you at least agree with me on submission of the year? I did indeed. Okay. Well, the Mighty Wiz Bar is the submission of the year, for sure. There you go. See, now he's got some sense. You can keep him. I'm going to say you should fire him and hire somebody yes. off the street. 
There, <laughs> if anyone gives that submission to anyone else, I mean, that you, you do not deserve to be covering the sport or talking about it or doing anything involved in it. Uh, before I let you go quickly here, DJ, you mentioned two fights next year. That's the plan for 2018. That's what you want? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, next year, two fights. You know, there comes a point in time when I was looking at my Wikipedia page, and yeah. there's time I, I fought four times in one year. I've defended on belt three times in a year and also got surgery between those paddle defenses. So I think it's safe to say that my goal is to get two paddle defenses this year. Um, and we're, we're going to go from there. So it's 2018. Um, goal is, is two paddle defenses and, and try to stay healthy. And um, we'll see you then. Don't worry, everybody. Next time you see me on MMA Hour, I'll be announcing my next fight or what, what's next for me. Yes. But until then, make sure you follow the, the Twitch channel, Mighty Mouse UFC 125. Twitch.tv and, and, and the YouTube channel, Mighty Game. Take a yes. look. Oh, the YouTube. You, you've, been, you've been upping your YouTube game as of late. I've noticed that. So well done on that. By the way, I wanted to tell you before you go, uh, we also do bold predictions. Last year, award show, so the 2016 award show, we had to make our pick for who we thought the 2017 fighter of the year was. I picked Demetrius Johnson. I just want to let you know that I picked you. And so I, I was proven right here. But, but wait, wait, wait. There was something on uh, like a stream that came out on Twitch. Can you tell us anything about this on Saturday? What were you doing? What's... Look, look, at, look at you. Look at you. So, um, yeah. uh, so back to the beginning of the YouTube channel. So I'm always trying to expand my YouTube channel. And I think it's very important that fighters always brand, uh, brand themselves outside of what they're, they're known for. So I can't fight forever. I, I'm 31 years old. As time goes on, my body's never recovered like it usually does. You just put more in body. So... I'm going to focus more on my YouTube channel and with my, my gaming career. And with that being said, I never really show my outside life, what I'm doing. So when I was getting ready for the Metro PCS Purple Couch at UFC 219, make sure you guys uh, hit the follow button, follow my Facebook Live and YouTube and all that good stuff. Uh, I was doing a stream. And one of the segments of the show was we're going to have Sean Shelby on the show. And we were going to show all of the previous shows and the segments. And he's saying, looking forward to 2018, here are some things that we're looking forward to, but we want to get Sean Shelby's piece of it. And one of the pieces was uh, me versus TJ Bullshaw. People, we wanted to get Sean Shelby's reaction for that. So uh. when the producer was doing his thing, he goes, we want to talk about TJ versus DJ. Not that the fight is, we don't know if it's going to happen or if it's been signed or anything like that. That was the segment. And then somebody caught it. Some Stupid ass troll talking goes, Oh my god, it's leaked. I got information. Yeah, go to read it. That's where it came from. So that's where the whole thing, but um there you go. That's what it was. Ah, uh, thank you for clearing that up. So there's no news to announce. There's nothing. You've been to- you've been hell hard, Arrow. You've been hell hard. You you text me right after and goes, Whoa, what's going on, DJ? And I'm uh. like, Jesus Christ, you're a Hawaiian. Stop done taking a poop and you're already texting it for God's sake. I, I need to know. Okay, I mean, it was so all good. over the place. Everyone was like, it's just been announced. It's just been leaked. We're going to find out. And so I had to come to the source. That's what a journalist does. Is there anything you want to say right. about you that come fight? To the source. What's that? Is there anything you want to say about that fight? I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to it if it happens. I'm looking forward to it. All right. All right, there. Look at that. Look at that stare. Look at that stare. I love <laughs> Demetrius. Congratulations on a phenomenal year. What a year it has been for you. Two great wins. You break the record. You pull up the submission of a lifetime. Unbelievable stuff. I called it. I said before the year was going to happen that you were going to do all of this. So I'm happy to be proven right once again, and uh, happy to see you at the top of the uh, the sport still for another year. And I'm expecting the same come this time next year. Thank you very much for doing this. I appreciate it. And how about Skype now? Each and every time I'm expecting this, by the way, all right? No more phone calls, no more crappy service. I'm expecting this type of uh, access to you. Well, I, I, well, we'll make sure. I'll do the best of my ability to make it happen. Obviously, you got to thank Destiny because she's taking the kids to school right now. I took thank you. the time off to do this for you, everyone. Thank and you. MMA fans out there. Not the bitter trolls out there, just the good ones. Yes, thank you very much. And, and what a moment we had back in May, June when you went on. I mean, it's been a great year for both of us together on this. You were in Hawaii. You <laughs> called it. <It's, laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thank you, DJ. Congrats on a great year, my man. Thanks, Earl. Have a good night, brother. You too. There he is. The one and only Demetrius Johnson, my 2017 male fighter of the year winner. And yes, if you go back to last year's show, uh, when we were doing our bold predictions, I looked ahead and I said that I do believe that in 2017, DJ would win the fighter of the year award. And lo and behold, in my opinion, he has done enough. Now, this is not a knock on Robert Whitaker. This is certainly not a knock on Max Holloway. In fact, initially I had it, uh, I, I had it for both Holloway and DJ, I was going to give out two awards. I was going to cut it down the middle. 
But then in the end, I said, I can't sit on the fence. That's no fun. So in the end, I went with the like him pulling off that submission and then him breaking the record, tipped the scales in his favor. If you picked Holloway, I was just kidding earlier. If you picked Holloway, you're not crazy. And if you picked Whitaker, you're not crazy, by the way. You really aren't. If you picked anything other than DJ winning the submission of the year, he is my 2017 submission of the year uh, winner. There you see the picture by the great Esther Lynn. Um, that's crazy. That is absolute crazy. That, that should be unanimous. That should be 100% of the votes in his favor. But Holloway, Whitaker, very strong years. All three of them were 2-0. and All three of them champs at the end of the year. All three of them great wins over top contenders. In the end, though, I go with history. I go with the great submission. I pick Demetrius Johnson. New York Rick, uh, he picked Max Holloway. And it seemed like most of you agree with him. I think you're all crazy. I'm just kidding.